put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Next mood review. Chris Johnson is a Las Vegas magician. He can he knows things are going to happen before they happen. And that's basically his act. Only it's not an act. He can actually see two minutes into the future, but only when it's regarding himself and sometimes things... Yeah, anyway, yeah, only two minutes. So the... I think FBI are after him because they think that, I guess they've sort of realized that he actually is the real deal, and they need him to stop a nuke. Only the terrorists who are going to set off the nuke also know about him. Somehow. And when he meets Liz and falls for her in some really awkward scenes that the audience suffers through in the hope that the movie will get better. It doesn't. I think what what's really what really prevents them completely from working is that he is old enough to be her father. Not not by that much, I suppose, but still I, I don't quite see why they couldn't have gotten someone who was age-appropriate, and before you say that she was hired for her hotness, yeah, she was, but there actually are... Kate Beckinsale could have, I think? Anyway, yeah, so he falls for her, and she's in the movie, and I think she has a character, sort of, a little bit. Yeah, it's vague. And I suppose that pretty well covers the plot. I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about the short story that this is <laughs> supposedly based on. Just so you know how much of a disappointment and how big a waste of potential it actually is. The Golden Man is about also Chris Johnson, who has this... He's literally golden. He looks like a statue and very impressive. And he can see a bit into the future. I shouldn't really give away how much. And he is hunted by the... I, I don't remember exactly what the agency is called. Maybe like the DSA something. Which hunts down mutants because there's been a war and it, in, in the aftermath, there came to be mutants. And there's this agency which is entirely present to hunt down and exterminate these mutants. And he is the most recent one they've come upon, and they fear that he might be the last one, that he may actually be the, the one that they especially need to get in order to keep humanity safe. It was written in the midst of McCarthyism and really captures that, although as I've just 
insinuated, it does seem to switch to being on the side of McCarthyism, arguably, somewhere in the story, but, which, I don't know, I personally get a little bit of a bad taste from that, but it still is a really great gripping story, and it really captures the terror of McCarthyism, this idea that you have to be be careful, that even the accusation of being an undesirable can really be, be dangerous. And I personally think that it would, that the time is perfect for stories about the, the terror of just, you know, if, if only the accusation if, is, is enough to destroy a life, because while McCarthyism with its blacklistings and, you know, basically the ruination of people, people's careers was horrible, I think it's pretty obvious that today is worse with Guantanamo Bay wiretap, warrantless wiretappings, yeah, I could go on, but... So yeah, that's that's what this movie could have been. <sighs> so anyway, I guess I should... If, if we just take this on its merits. This is not supposed to be a smart movie, and it definitely isn't. So, okay, we treat it as just mindless popcorn entertainment. It really only works as an action movie. There's there's hardly any sci-fi, really, other than the, the central concept. You know, there, there's no... there's nothing else as, that, that is sci-fi. It, it has some comedy, but most of it is horrendous. I kid you not, the jokes are worse than mine, with a few exceptions. There are maybe two or three jokes in this that aren't completely terrible. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an action movie. A good deal of the early half, the, the first half of the movie, is remarkably boring. Mostly because of aforementioned chemistry-less romance between Nicolas Cage and Jessica Biel. Once the action does get going, it's not too bad. And certainly it keeps the pace going, mostly to keep the audience from actually thinking about the plot, because it falls apart the moment you start. Just even casually thinking about it. The And to be fair, the movie is not entirely uncreative in its uses of the ability of being able to see two minutes into the future. However, it does, the gimmick wears off, and you realize really early on that Chris just kind of walks right through these situations. There, there isn't, there, it doesn't feel like it could go wrong, basically, and yeah. To, one thing that does bear mentioning is and there's an early scene where he is evading some security people and basically he knows exactly where to turn and where to walk at any point and it kind of it's it's similar to that scene early in the matrix where morpheus is guiding neo through the office, 
you know, in, in between cubicles and past printers and the like, copiers, I guess. Anyway, the there's a decent enough cast. Chris is hiding out with Columbo for a while, and you know the. FBI, I guess, we're searching for him, are led by Agent Starling. The acting is not particularly impressive, though. The, the effects are really unremarkable. It really does not look like 2007 CGI. Or, if, if then, if of that year, then at least very cheap CGI. We have some bits where Chris is like dodging bullets and the like, and it just feels very Matrix-like. This is not me giving something away, this is in the trailer. There is maybe one location which is Kind of cool. It's it's this area of the Grand Canyon. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but yeah, it's you know it's it's visually attractive, definitely. And I suppose that more or less covers it. There's a really big problem with the ending of this movie, but. I can't really give it away. It's the first thing I'm talk about in the spoiler video, so if you if you really must know, then by all means check that out. Yeah, just plot holes. Not really. It doesn't give you much. I mean you. The characters aren't particularly developed, and yeah, there's not really much of anything you care about in this movie. Some of the action can be pretty decent, and certainly for the last half of the movie, the pace isn't too bad. Yeah, I suppose that pretty well covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.